Yo, what's going on guys and welcome to the last video update about my 0 to 100 exalts challenge and it is the last one because as you can see I did manage to finish it we have here 100 actually 101 exalts and it took me a little bit less than uh, 48 hours in fact it was probably more around uh, like 45 hours because I did spend some time making videos and AFKing so it was probably somewhere between uh, 45 and 48. I did expect to be honest this to take uh, much longer probably somewhere between 30 and 40 hours but unfortunately I did run into some unexpected issues and mainly they were caused because of the rules that I did set for myself for this challenge and for the last time uh, I'm gonna quickly remind you the set of rules uh, that we had for this challenge. So first rule was that I had to start on a new account. As you can see, I have no stash tabs, uh, so start fresh. But I did allow myself to use my main account for trading and for stashing some uh, stuff, just because I didn't want to spend some money on new stash tabs in here. The second rule that is that I had to use only strategies based around the Atlas, so I couldn't do simulacrums, blighted maps, logbooks, highs, and so on, so only mapping. And the last, the most important rule, which causes the most amount of issues, is uh, viewers chose a build for me to play. And the build they chose is Spark. So that's a build that I haven't really played before. I only played Val Spark like two years ago, so I didn't really know how to progress this build. And after the last video that I made, I did spend around three hours and around 10 exalts to upgrade my gear and I did expect to have a little bit more single target and I also was dying quite a lot to the physical damage and chaos damage because I don't have any chaos resist and physical damage but I did have some nice defense against elemental damage but yeah still I did expect it to be a bit more single target and I guess if there are people that know a bit more about this build and how to progress it you can look at my POB I'm gonna post it in the description and you can let me know what would you have done better with the gear but speaking of gear let me quickly go over what uh, I got so first and most important thing is I got the melding the flesh jewel which I got for free results which basically gives you all of your maximum resist to be uh, the same amount as just one of them and the one I went for is the cold which is the mo most popular option because you can just get plus 5 maximum cold from Ichis Aurora which is what I bought for like 60c on top of that you're gonna start using the purity of ice which gives you 5% if you have a level 23 which is why I got a level 21 plus the uh, plus 2 to socket at AOE gems on gloves so I have a level 23 which is 5% and the last 5% you get basically through the increased effectiveness of aura which is why I went for the annoyed man for charisma for 6% here I went for the implicit on chest 21% increased effect of purity of ice 10% uh, of all of the auras on top of that uh, this wheel and this wheel for increased effects and I think that's basically it so yeah thanks to all of these things I was able to reach enough to get 90% uh, all maximum uh, resistances and thanks to that the bullet is a great option for uh, damage because it gives you 20% uh, lightning and cold damage per uh, maximum resist uh, above uh, 275 and to get more out of it I'm also converting the lightning damage to cold through Call of uh, Brotherhood and these were basically the main upgrades I got on top of that I did uh, get uh, the inevitable judgment uh, forbidden flesh and flame which uh, enabled me to use augury of uh, penitence for 16% increased damage and 8% less damage taken elemental damage taken on top of that I went for the cluster jewel setup uh, because I stopped using the boots that gave me pierce now I went for the plus one pierce uh, from medium plus one pierce in here and plus one pierce on gloves and boots and helmet so plus four pierce which is good enough in my opinion 
on the large one, which I bought, I think, for like two exalts, I have uh, Dorian Snowson for uh, Life Leech, Snowstorm for some extra damage, and Prismatic Heart for elemental resistances and damage. And the second mod on the medium mounts is Streamline, just for some damage. I also bought Water Eye for consecutive ground, uh, gives you 10%, well, gives enemies 10% uh, damage taken. Also gives uh, energy shield leech, but to be honest, it's not that much of a leech because uh, it's a lightning damage leech, and 96% of my lightning damage is converted to coal, so only 4% is still lightning, so it's not that great amount of leech. And in terms of three, nothing really changed, everything, everything is the same. Uh, oh, I guess I also went for increase aura effect here for uh, purity of ice, which also helps with. Uh, other auras are like uh, zealotry, uh, determination, and uh, vitality. I also had to start using the enlighten to be able to start using all of the auras. Uh, I'm using again determination and zealotry. Here you can see vitality. I also started using assassin mark instead of sniper mark because I checked POB and assassin mark with my current crit chance has been a little bit better, not by that much, but a little bit. And I also don't have that much dexterity for assassin mark. Cast on the portal, uh, faster attacks with shield charge, sigil of power, uh, righteous fire. Right now I have enough uh, maximum resistances to uh, basically have perma righteous fire for 39% spell damage. Life tap with Wrath, which is something that I talked about in my last video with Divine Blessing, which basically enables me to use one more aura and my life recovers super fast. So with Life tap, I can just use it and basically almost without any downside. And I have it for uh, 10 seconds, I guess, yeah, around yeah, 17 seconds. Uh, so yeah, these were basically the gems I went for and nothing really else changed in here. Or, and I guess, Flame Charge with Alcrine Surge and Frost Shield. And in Weapon Swap, I am using Brightweak with Prismatic Eclipse for faster attacks and leaps on because it's a very nice uh, way of just moving over the cliffs and stuff. And if you are just uh, trying to go from map, from map as fast as possible, this is a, a good way to do it. But it is actually pretty similar speed to Shield Charge. But yeah, I think leaps on is actually a bit better and it also goes over the ledges. Uh, the other items, uh, like I already mentioned, plus two gloves, also with unnerf, 15% uh, chance to unnerf on hit. Uh, damage percent doesn't matter, it just I didn't get anything better. On helmet, uh, basically spark enchant and plus two gems doesn't really do anything, but plus one pierce is a nice. Life resists and implicits also are kind of whatever, just couldn't get anything better. Uh, amulet plus one, uh, lightning gems, some strength, dexterity, resist and life, nothing too crazy uh, on amulet. Boots also life resist, movement speed, belt life resist, movement speed, uh, jewel with phasing, life and some lightning damage spells. And chest is actually the only item that I didn't change which is still uh, just a 16 chain chest with some life resists, and I also crafted 10% life as extra energy shield. And yeah, this is basically it in terms of the items. For flask, I'm just losing life with uh, bleed immunity, mana with chill, uh, crit the chance flask with crit chance uh, mod, armor flask with armor, and movement speed flask with additional movement speed. That's basically it. Okay. So that's it in terms of uh, gear. Now let me go over the strategies that I went. So maybe I uh, just a quick update on, if in case you haven't watched my previous videos. Uh, when I started mapping, basically I went for uh, just essences early on. Uh, Alva, and I got quite a lot of exalts from uh, selling the Alva temples. Uh, Sentinel and Chaos Recipe. After that I dropped Chaos Recipe and was just doing Essences, Alva and Sentinel. And then for the final push, when I basically just started to grind currency, I did finish, like almost fully finish my Atlas, I got 90 uh, passive points. And I went for a uh, strategy that doesn't really have name, I kinda am calling it uh, Gilded uh, Scarab. 
rushing, which is basically a strategy where you are buying the uh, sextant. So let me quickly show it to you. It is this sextant. First free possessed monster, drop an additional gilded scarab. So when you are gonna enter a map, you're gonna quickly just run through it, search for free possessed monsters, and get just guaranteed free scarabs from them. And you can either go and find also the essence that you will get thanks to a guaranteed essence from this passive. And you can also kill a map boss uh, because you're gonna get the guardian mobs. And also, uh, killing a map boss is not uh, as important because uh, in the past when I was doing the strategy, it would also give you the progression of Searing Exarch and right now we don't need to do it. You just need to kill a few monsters at the beginning. So killing a map boss is only giving you the guardian maps. Because of that, it is actually a very good strategy to even do in white and yellow maps. Uh, so you only need basically essence passives and seance so that up to five rare monsters in the map are gonna be uh, possessed and you're gonna buy these sextants. I am gonna give you a quick example how strategy works. So basically you were just uh, pick a one uh, just any yellow or white maps uh, if you don't have that great of a damage and also by the way you need at least one void stone to be able to do it this is why I also killed the Searing Exarch so I can get this void stone so in the white or yellow maps you will just enter and basically you search for repossessed monster and this is why the essences are so nice because essences most of the time are gonna be uh, possessed so this is also why I'm using leap sum just to travel quickly through a map and this is obviously better in some maps. Ticket is not the best, but if you don't feel like buying maps, mm, sometimes you just have to do it in uh, pretty bad layouts. So yeah, I did this strategy in uh, like uh, multiple different ways. Like sometimes I would just buy, if I could just find a lot of good maps, I would just buy good white or yellow maps for like 1c. Sometimes I would just use whatever I have if I didn't feel like buying. Sometimes I would buy specific red maps and sometimes I would just use uh, red maps that I just had. So uh, we reached the essence. So now I would corrupt. I forgot to take remnants. I guess it doesn't matter that much. And as you can see, it is possessed. And also I got copy thanks to the uh, this passive, so both of them were possessed and I got both of my scarabs and some additional essences which are also pretty expensive. And you can see here that uh, Gilded Divination Scarab is worth uh, 26c, so this is actually the best results you can get. And Expedition and Blight are also decent. So this is how you would do it in the yellow maps, in a tier 14 or 16 plus. So for example in a red one, tier 14, and this is bad layout, so Dark Forest, and it has also a pretty bad boss. I mean, it's not that bad of a map, but you basically are gonna uh, run and also search for the possessed monsters, but this, in this uh, case, you don't really care that much about killing uh, map boss. Because again, uh, you will gonna get pro uh, proc of the influence anyway, even without killing a map boss. So let me quickly find it. Pretty unlucky. Very often you just find uh, all three possessed monsters like immediately. Well, this would be also a very nice uh, essence. Uh, and I got the proc. And both of them are possessed. And again, most of the time they will uh, be possessed. And as you can see, like it wasn't even uh, that bad of a single target. This essence actually, essence actually died pretty fast. But when there were essences with like six uh, essences in them, I would very often just skip them because I couldn't even kill them. And also the rarity of maps doesn't matter, you can do it in white. And this is the last example, which is basically the most efficient way to do the strategy. It's to choose a good layout, like for example beach, because boss is easy and it's very small layout. And you would uh, just go quickly, again, find the possessed monsters, and again I got lucky, both of them are uh, possessed. And you can see here that they are not dying as fast as earlier, and also I am almost dying. They died, 
I got two scarabs, and now I'm searching for the third one. And here it is. And now on top of that you can reach the map boss, which should be somewhere around here. So it doesn't take that much time. Also you can uh, get smuggler caches if you feel like it. But I mostly ignored them, and then you can also kill a map boss. Which as you can see here dies decently fast. And from map bosses, as you can see here, you're gonna get the garden up from time to time. Not always. Um, so yeah, basically this is the strategy that I went for, but unfortunately the build for this strategy was just not the best. And this is what I always talk about whenever you're going for some strategy. You always should try to uh, get the most out of it by choosing the right build for it. And you can always just uh, go for the strategies anyway and you're gonna get decent money like I got in here. But you definitely can make more. Like if I, for example, played like a seismic trapper, I would be able to kill the essences and map bosses much faster. I also maybe would be able to use the sextant for the guaranteed guardian map drops from the uh, bosses and stuff. But yeah, still, even with a build that is not like that crazy for, for the strategy, you can still make uh, some money. So yeah, again, I was doing it a little bit in yellow maps, a little bit in tier 14 plus and a little bit in a like a perfect tier 14 plus where i would also kill a map boss and in terms of like profit from these scarabs uh, in case you are, you are wondering there's basically 16 scarabs and i basically checked the pov ninja and as of right now uh, average uh, price of gilded scarab is seven chaos and i was buying the sextant for uh, between 15 and 30 c uh, a lot of them i actually bought for around 20 c so let's say it's 20 c Basically, you are getting 12 scarabs from one sextant because it has four uses and gives you three scarabs. So 12 scarabs per sextant. So you are basically paying, let me quickly check. If you uh, uh, buy a sextant for, let's say 30 C, you are paying 2.5 C per scarab. And again, you get around 7 C. With current uh, prices of the scarabs, you are getting around 7c per scarab, so profit is basically uh, 7 4.5c per scarab. So every map you are getting 13.5c basically per map just from the scarabs. On top of that, you're gonna get again garden mouse invitations and essences so this is basically the strategy that i went for i farmed it for around 15 hours and that is also including all of the training uh for uh, all of the exalts and it took me like two hours i think to trade and so on so if it took me around 15 hours uh, and i got all of the exalts from it Basically, I was making around 6.6x per hour with not super optimized gear and again like I don't have the, all of the atlas passives and Very often I would have to just do a bad maps and the last issue Which I already mentioned in my past videos is basically trading like I was still struggling with Being able to sell some stuff, but it's mostly not even about selling mostly it was about buying like actually being able to buy the sextants being able to buy maps like very often i would just whisper 10 people that have like 50 maps posted and, and just none, none of them would apply reply or sometimes just none of the maps would actually be even posted on the trade so yeah starting this late in the league has its upside with uh, like prices of stuff you can uh, buy a lot of stuff cheaper but it also have some downside with uh, trade building being not as active so yeah i'm basically done with the challenge i actually did uh, learn a lot i was actually having a lot of fun like day three i actually played for like 16 17 hours i actually definitely liked this challenge and i uh, am glad that i did it and a lot of people seem to also uh, like it a lot a lot of uh, people watch me uh, during my streams actually i had i probably the most uh, viewed viewed uh, streams ever so yeah it was definitely fun I was thinking about doing more of them bit, uh, before the link start, but maybe it would be a bit m too repetitive. I'm not sure. Maybe I will do like one or two more with a different set of rules. Maybe only stuff outside of the Atlas or something. Uh, if you have any ideas, what could I do be be uh, before the uh, next uh, link start? 
uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. One thing I'm thinking about doing is maybe doing the same thing, but without actual grinding the exalts. Because to be honest, the last 15 hours is just grinding. There's nothing like in terms of progression of gear or changing the strategy on Atlas and so on. So maybe I, sh I am gonna do things like uh, playing a build that people choose for me for like one day or two uh, just to figure out how to play the builds uh, during the league start so I have maybe a better idea of what to play next league because to be honest as of right now I have no plans for the next league uh, I don't have any builds planned and so on but yeah for now that's basically it thanks for watching and see you next time